a little bit painful to be early to the trend or whatever because you see other people jump on that and then they're more successful than you but it also kind of reminds you that like you were right like yo my ear was actually right yeah so my name is anonymous i'm a producer beat maker been making beats for the majority of my life now it's been my life's work really and uh, i live in orlando florida been based there now for 10 years really got my start in the game working with Kasky. so i've been his primary producer for close to 10 years now and uh, recently started in the management side with him but built a real cult fan base building our catalog and have taken that approach of coming up with an artist you know that's my brother and we just really just got a catalog now that we've been you know really proud of and continue to make music together well it's kind of funny my dad actually worked on the beastie boys first album and he was a part of like that new york punk rock scene in the 80s i just always saw him playing in bands and we had a little studio set up in the basement of our house and this is right when you know everybody was starting to record at home and like computers were taking off but i started out on an mpc and would have to uh sample whatever i could come across and i was sampling i mean even the satellite tv box the classical channel and i just got fascinated with creating from other sounds and then that evolved into what it is now you know vsts and everything but just studying the greats and the producers i was always more compelled by who made the music and like what was making that particular song distinct was it a sound was it a specific drum that's just kind of been my passion and always drawn me well why is this song so cool and why does this sound so unique you know I just always had this inclination that I was good at what I was doing. I started out rapping like a lot of producers, like a lot of beat makers, and I did my fair share of shows and making my own music and supporting the local artists around, you know, my area where I was growing up. And I was actually younger than a lot of the guys in my neighborhood and none of them had recording setups, so I recorded everybody. And I just over time started focusing more on my sound and something just told me like, hey, you're really not gonna be a, a recording artist, at least for now, but you're really good at making beats. And that's kind of like that moment where I was like, I'm just gonna really go hard on making beats and, and get really better at this. I've always made dark, trippy, like sampling myself, stuff like that. And I saw that the industry was like shifting towards my sound. And that also gave me like a, a battery, you know, to like continue down the path. because. There's a lot of times where you're like, should I be doing this? You know, like as creatives, we we just have to figure out where our time needs to be spent. And I was just always called back into music, you know? I always made like harder beats. I would say big influence like from 3-6 Mafia and a lot of the Memphis sound. It was kind of considered underground at the time. And also liked a lot of East Coast producers. There was some producers online at the time, but not a lot. And I was reaching out to a handful of them that I came across and was asking them about their process. We were actually chatting on uh, Instant Messenger on AIM. And it was funny because I remember when I got in the chat with this one guy, he was telling me, oh, I use an MPC. And I was like, man, I got to get an MPC now. And it just took me down this path of like, taking it serious and realizing like I could do it myself. When I was in college, I was just about to get out of college and Drake dropped, uh, if you're reading this, it's too late. And like BPMs kind of slowed down and music got more grueling and a little bit more emotional. Everybody was hitting me up saying, hey man, this sounds like something you would make. So, you know, it went from being really like underground and ahead of the curve and no one really knew what my sound was like oh like why are you making beats like this because this is what's hot you know and then all of a sudden everybody was doing it it's a little bit painful to be early to the trend or whatever because you see other people jump on that and then they're more successful than you but it also kind of reminds you that like you were right like yo my ear was actually right and um, that's kind of like the timeline of you know just having fun with it recording other people and then eventually realizing like yo my sound is actually industry or my sound is you know at this commercial level i think there's artists that would want to get on my beats i was a little late to it but i also sold beats directly and what i thought was really cool was that i could automate everything 
because I was on the road and like doing stuff with Caskey and working on his projects. And, you know, I'd be spending a lot of times talking to artists, telling them like my beat prices and just going over the typical process of selling beats directly through email and whatnot or in the DM. And once I got on BeatStars, I was like, whoa, I can like automate all this. I can set my pricing how I want it. That was about 2021, I really started uploading. I think I had made an account earlier to that, but I just didn't take the time to really learn the platform yet, know how it was gonna benefit me in that way. And I was kind of stuck in my ways by selling beats directly to the same guys over and over. I'm like steadily growing on there. I'm getting a bigger following on BeatStars getting more streams on my beats. I do get good feedback now and I'm trying to, you know, hone that process in more. I think it's something you're always working on and uh, that's a good challenge to have, but the tools are, are so much better because I'd rather upload something and have everything laid out in front of them than have to take my personal time to do that, you know? Cause then I can focus on creating more, and building relationships. You gotta balance your time and you know, time is, is our most valuable resource. There's gonna be people that adapt and then there's gonna be people that kind of get left in the dust. And I wanted to be one of those people that adapted. If I'm gonna have exposure from a song, or if I'm gonna have people DM me about beats, to have the same conversation over and over, it's stressful, it, it wastes your time, you know, it takes away from your creative process. And that allows me to like really tap in more on building a relationship with the artist because now it's like it's like a, a touch and go method of like you can focus on that interaction better instead of oh okay let me tell him about my beat prices let me tell him about what the leases are or if he wants to you know and so i really like that bridging that gap of being able to just be myself more and focus on that interaction yo just go check out my beats and like let me know which ones you're rocking with. I'd love to see what you do to them, bro. Um, you know, I run promotions a lot of times and I'll notify my regular customers about that and then they'll they'll go take advantage of that. And like recently I put up beats that I did for an album that I executive produced and um, the artist was cool with it. So I was able to actually lease out the beats. I didn't make them available for exclusive use, but I made them available for lease. Those beats are also available for streaming, you know, on Spotify and Apple Music. So I feel like touching every aspect of it is like the real benefit. And you're missing out on, you know, the community aspect too. I think that kind of goes unnoticed sometimes. It's like, this is a dope community. Like there's really a lot of great talent, people to collaborate with, other songwriters, people that would never come across your beats. And that's like, for anyone that's thinking about it, kind of wondering like, well, what, what's the difference? You got this community aspect and, and that whole automated process. It's pretty much a no brainer. You should at least be doing it. Even if you still do some of the old method of pulling up to studios and selling beats that way and, and or however you do it, you know? I'm kind of a little bit more introverted in the sense of my creativity. So getting outside of that and, and realizing like, we can all learn together and make better stuff if we just lower that, you know, threshold of like, well, I'll only collab with this person if this or that. And I mean, some of these guys, they really got big hits, you know, they're really out here doing it and they're all super cool and down to earth and willing to talk about the process, how the placement came and then collaborate with you on new ideas. And uh, that's been like a real experience for me. And um, it feels good not only to be accepted by other creatives, but you get to see it through their lens. They get to see it through my lens of like, yo, that's really dope how you did that and or how you're selling, you know, your beats online. And then they also get to see through, you know, their lens and, and look at my situation and be like, well, that's dope that you built with this artist for 10 years and now you're kind of going the internet route. It's kind of funny because a lot of us are like crossing where they did the internet, but now they're crossing with working with artists. And I was working with an artist, now I'm crossing more into the internet, which is, it's a testament that no one's path is linear and no one's path is gonna be the same in this, but that you just need to be open-minded, be willing to collaborate. Collaboration is where the root of all this great music comes from. And you can't do it all on your own. And then you have teams like BeatStars, Sony, 
met uh, all these people coming together to give us an experience, teach us about the infrastructure more and just take the time to actually support us and give us that confirmation of like, we're really doing something great here. The collaboration I think is important and yeah, it's taken me out of my comfort zone because sometimes there's a stigma against loop makers and there's a stigma against the process of doing it what you think is right and what you think is wrong. But that's the beauty of art and music in itself is that we're not really smart enough to know what's exactly going to work. None of us know exactly what's going to be a hit, what's going to go viral, what's going to sell the most. And you get to experience that collaboration is going to show you like, hey, you're not always going to be right in this. And there's another way to do this. And if you just tap into that a little bit, I feel like my momentum is probably going to go in a different direction. Like I, I feel I'm unbreakable as a creative, like no one could take me or derail me off my path right now. Cause I know that this is a part of my calling. It's my passion. Right. But it just gives me more fuel to be like, you know what? I need to try these things. That's where my level up is. My level up is going to be in the thing that I've been probably holding myself back from and giving that chance. And I really feel like some of the, the music we made, it gives me a whole new sense of confidence, you know? Cause when you get those little wins, it adds up to like bigger wins that you weren't planning for. And, th and that's the takeaway from it is like, you gotta step outside your comfort zone to, to experience that. And I'm thankful for it. It's been a great experience, like for real. You need wins like that as a producer. Yo, like I'm dope at this. There's so many times where I was questioning it and then you get that placement. Oh, now this is my biggest record. I would chalk this up on that list of something that made me realize more of like, yo, you are dope at this and like you, you are meant for this. And it felt really good. I'm grateful to be invited. I took it serious, but I also came in with very low expectations of, you know what, I'm gonna play the long game. I'm gonna meet some guys that are really dope. I'm gonna network with them. Even if it doesn't come from this exact moment that I'm gonna work on fostering that relationship into the future and, and see what we can really make. And I feel like I made those connections here. So yeah, I'm super grateful. I hope I expressed that well enough. Just to get the invite, it meant a lot. And uh, definitely thank you to BeatStars, thank you to Abe, you know, you're dope, bro. Like, this is the type of stuff I like to see in the industry. We need more of this. Unfortunately, there's so many creatives, you can't create with everybody, but to get a curated group of guys together that are really dope, like, it's, I really feel like I'm a part of a community here. Kasky's catalog, I did a lot of his fan favorites. Cadillac was a big record for us. We almost didn't put it on Black Sheep 2, was his album at the time. It got put on the album last minute. It was one of those ones that we slept on and it became a staple to his whole career. And we recently did an album dedicated to that vibe, that song, and we called it Cadillac Music. I'm proud of that whole sound and what that has brought us as far as fans and being able to tour off of it and just seeing the connection we have with with that whole you know die hard fan base another song i produced in 2021 right before i got with beat stars publishing was uh, jack boy where i'm from and that was like a really dope song it's one of his top streaming songs and i, I just put together quick guitar piano beat with a couple other producers and, and it ended up just coming out right at the right time and i'm super proud of that song too because it means something he's actually like telling part of his life story and obviously i got other records too i did a lot of uh, stuff with guys that never came out and and those were also part of my building blocks but as far as streaming and just my catalog that like i hold dear to my heart it would be the ones i stated the internet, beat stars, social media is like the most powerful thing I think we can do as individual creatives is build that up. So I'm gonna continue to focus on my personal brand and me being a producer in that space and continue to develop artists and work with them from the ground up and also giving back to other producers by teaching them whatever gems I have. I think that's like a really important part of the process is you get to a point where you could either look at people that haven't done what you've done and, and kind of be like, well, why aren't you here? Or why don't you have this? Or you could look at them like, yo, I was right where you were or right where you're at right now. So like, I'd love to give you some game and teach you something. 
So that's part of my uh, mission right now. And, you know, being in the industry, you never really feel like you're a hundred percent ready. You're never going to be fully ready for whatever comes, but being able to show up to opportunities like perform right on the spot makes me want to continue to do that. Say yes to more opportunities and see what comes from it. Because, you know, when you have the right mindset, the right intention, I feel like it comes back to you in abstract ways, stuff that I couldn't even probably plan out or say on this interview, you know, that's what I'm looking forward to. The things that are kind of just going to pop up and I'm just going to experience it in the moment.